time for another edition of the original roundtable with Ian Fitzsimmons from ESPN. I'm Lance Stetter for the next round right here on Disrupt the Media. Like, subscribe, give us that thumbs up. It's always brought to you by MyBookie. Use that code next round, secure first deposit bonus up to 10%. That is at MyBookie.ag. You saw Alabama up close and personal this past Saturday night. I don't know what time you got to bed. I never saw you on Sunday. I saw you on Friday for a quick cocktail. Um, yeah, I thought Alabama looked good. I don't know what your takeaway from that game was. Uh, Will Rogers has got an Alabama problem. He's had it for years. Mississippi State's not that good. Alabama's good. Are they championship good? You tell me what you what you saw in Starkville Saturday night. Yeah, you know, I think Kelly Stauffer and LT, it was great to see you, man. Yeah, I wasn't even going to text you on uh, on Sunday morning. I mean, it was – we rolled back into uh, the Trips place, Trip Rogers, uh, owner of the Innisfree Irish Pub. Uh, we got there about two in the morning. He was on his front porch playing Christmas carols with his dog Asher. So uh, there you go, right there. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Deep. Oh, I mean, yeah. We're getting in, getting into Christmas spirit. I got about ninety days out. Just going ahead and hiking your leg on the pumpkin and the turkey. Right. Right, man. It's on. it's October though, of course. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, it's, uh, the Christmas stuff's already up at like Home Depot and. And lows and everywhere else. It drives me insane, LT. But I digress. You asked what time we rolled in. There it was. Uh, driving back over from, from uh, Stark Vegas. But Kelly Stalker played at Colorado State. Played for the Seattle Seahawks for, what, seven, eight years. I mean, he knows the quarterback position. And he made the comment in the third quarter, LT, that we're watching Jalen Milrow grow up before our eyes. And I remember talking to Bill O'Brien, obviously the, the former OC at Alabama, now with the Patriots, about Milrow when I had Bama last year. And he said... He can make the wild play, the, you know, the slam dunk, the highlight reel. He just has to, with reps, the more repetitions he gets, he's going to be able to learn how to make the layup plays. Now, you don't have to throw it 90 miles an hour for a little slip screen. And you're you're watching Jalen Milrow start to grow up with the more with every single rep that he gets. So that was number one. Number two, man, J.C. Latham, good God. He doesn't want to block you. He wants to embarrass you. He wants and your boy. family and your dog. I mean, it's, it's just – he is an absolute treasure at right tackle. He's going to be a first-round pick, and he plays with it with an anger to him. As does that team, LT. I mean, let me let me. I'll pose this back to you because you watched it. Uh, but just being behind that bench, I mean, they, you have the feel that this group doesn't want to be the one that ended the run. Does that make sense? Oh and yeah. They're playing with a serious attitude about them now. When that number came out against A and M. At two and a half, I'm going to put this to you. You're one of the best handicappers I've ever been around. I got a little bit scared for Bama coming off a very impressive win on the road. Well, look, I think it comes down to this. Max Johnson, uh, you know, under the lights, how how good is he going to be? Jalen Milrow is getting better, but a quarterback that made mistakes, especially in that Texas game, that number's a weird number, and it's been bet yeah. down. You know, it opened at three and a half. It's down to two and a half. A lot of sharp money on Texas A&M. Texas A&M outside of Texas will be by far the best de defense this Alabama offense has faced, and it's on the road. I've never been to Kyle Field. Oh. I heard it, heard it's loud. I heard it's hot, um, and it's a place. The last time Alabama was there, they lost. Yeah, it, it won't be that hot. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm four hours from there, being living here in Dallas. You know, the temps are actually going to drop this weekend into the high 70s, low 80s, and finally, football nice. weather is hitting the state of Texas, but. Man, Kyle Field gets loud. And when they do that damn sway, especially when they're in a dome, obviously they're not at Kyle Field. But I almost want to throw up. It makes me kind of nauseous when you're going yep. back and forth. And you watch it on TV in a dome. You're like, man, just get me out of here. But they get after it, dude. I mean, that you know, the cadets and the little ice cream, little Lord Fauntleroy boys running up and down the sidelines. Um, that's not the indicator how rowdy that crowd does get. So it's going to be a hostile environment, to your point. Uh, but that number scared me. When I saw that on yeah. Sunday, I'm going, whoa, wait a minute. Well, you know, we talked good. We talked, we didn't do our post game till like 1 a.m. because we were waiting till oh, after Alabama goes. Mississippi State. Uh it's always entertaining. Always entertaining. <laughs> um, and and since Alabama won, Alabama fans are excited. They'll take a win. It's not like we want to completely dominate, but a 23 pit went 23 point win on the road, they'll take that. Um, I don't know, man. I I am uh I'm fascinated when we were asked on the post game, though, what we thought the number would come at. I said six and a half. And then people were saying it's eight and a half. And I was like, damn, that's a big number on the road against AM. And then we wake up and actually it's three and a half, now down to two and a half. But the number is probably about right. I mean, these are pretty equivalent teams. I mean, you got a coaching, uh, uh, obviously, advantage with Nick Saban. I don't know where you are on the quarterbacks. I think the defense for Alabama is a little bit better, but home field with AM, AM's got better playmakers. I mean, it's, yeah. it's an evenly matched game. 
And, and I'll tell you what, man, Chris Braswell, he, he's, 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 he's making money this year. Oh yeah. He's gone. I talked to one NFC scout going into the game, LT. You know, you mentioned Bama's defense there. I mean, it, it, look, he's gone from a sixth round type pick to a third round type pick. He's getting better and better. Talk about middle road with the reps. Same thing here. He's been in not just Will Anderson's shadow, but Dallas Turner's shadow. And yeah, Dallas is playing better. I was you know? about to say Dallas leads the SEC now with yep. five and a half sacks. Is he that stock was first round to begin? You know, after a couple of games, especially after Texas, it looked like it dipped down. Is it back up? Maybe. Oh yeah, it's starting yeah. to go back up again. Now on the back end, I mean, that, that same NFC scout told me, you know, as much, Kool-Aid gets all the attention on the right side. Terry on the other side is also making some money. I mean, people forget he's not a sophomore. He's a redshirt sophomore. I mean, so he could come out if he wanted to, but he's gone from a sixth, seventh round type pick to also a third round, maybe late third round type corner right now. So that, that and Malachi Moore, that dude's a quarterback of that defense. I mean, he doesn't give a damn. There was one moment, uh, and it was late in the third quarter that he and Dallas Turner really got into it. I don't know if you saw that, uh, LT. But coming off the field, I mean, it, it was – I mean, Malachi was mother ruined Dallas and Dallas going back at him. And it wasn't that it was a combative deal. It was more firm encouragement. Like, how did you not see that? So, I mean, it's just two competitors trying to make each other better. And I didn't see that early on with this Bama team. Now it's starting to show up. But, again, that number scares the ever-loving hell out of me. It's the original roundtable of the Infant Simmons from ESPN. I'm Lance Taylor from the next round. Like, subscribe, disrupt the media. That is the channel right here. It's presented by Lance's Lock. Jump on board. Coming off another winning weekend. We've won every weekend this fall. Uh, we're going to win for you. Lance's <laughs> Lock. Well, how did you do that? We had a a uh, no, stop we, stop. I'm not letting you. Gl- you're not glossing over that. I, I I I gotta sell this and I sell it every week like that and it's worked out. I'm knocking on wood. I've got wood right here. Yeah. Hey, look, I mean, I, I'm I shit- everything for you, man. I mean, good lord, you had a hell of a weekend again. Yeah, we we shit the bed on Monday night. But look, when you give up 11 sacks and you're the New York oh. Giants, these things happen. Dude. Uh, anyway, that's another story, another time. You head to Minneapolis. I had an opportunity to go to that city a couple of years ago, and I was supposed to go to the Nebraska-Minnesota game. And I was excited about it, but the temperatures were like in the 30s. And I'm like, I ain't sitting outside for a Big Ten game that really means nothing. Uh, P.J. Fleck, uh, that's a polarizing guy. If he he's not your coach, most people don't like him. On the other side, Michigan, statistically best defense in college football. I don't have a problem, although they hadn't played anybody, saying they're the best defense in college football. Um, I mean, how does Minnesota manufacture points in this game? I got nothing for you. Yeah. I mean, I don't blame <laughs> you. I mean, look, this was to the point, LT, where three weeks ago I pitched Kentucky, Georgia. Going, this is going to be a top 25 matchup, guys. It might be unbeatens on, you know, swap and paint. No, 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 no faith in Kentucky. Uh, what do we have? Unbeatens, top 20 matchup. I mean, so I'm not, I mean, look, Minnesota, and I, I like PJ Fleck. You're right. He's a little quirky, but I like him. All right. I think he's a heck of a football coach. But this Michigan bunch, I mean, I, I can't wait to watch them match up with, with somebody that, that is really, really good. No, I can't wait to get your take on the sideline on on how comparable Alabama and Michigan will be yeah, after, that's next after week. you see that's, them. Yeah. That's a great one. I, and I'll, I'll, I'm pumped. That, that is one aspect I'm pumped to watch. And Blake Corum. He and yeah. Edwards, man, that's the best running back room in all of college football. Blake Corum is such a great kid. But you mentioned that defense. Think about this, LT. Nebraska was averaging over 230 yards rushing on the ground. Michigan held them to 106. And they were angry about it because they broke the century mark. They, they have had at least a 14-point lead in like 60-something percent of, of, of their games. You, you know how hard that is to have a 14-point lead for over 60% of the football that you've played so far? Well, and That's the same crazy it, man. And somebody brought it up on the show. They were like, they haven't played anybody when, when I was talking they about haven't. the defense. And I said, I get that, but to hold anybody every week, they hold yeah, their opponents yeah. to seven points or less. I every agree. week. Yeah. And, and like UNLV's incredible. four and one, Rutgers is four and one. Their one loss is to Michigan. Yeah. But still, I mean, it's Rutgers and UNLV. I want them to sit. I can't wait for Penn State. I can't wait for Ohio State, which obviously we have to wait a while for. But I like your idea of kind of just comparing body type, attitude, all of that speed. With Big Bad Bama, uh, because that is – now I've got that on the noggin. I appreciate that because uh, that is something I'm definitely going to do. That's what we do for each other. Okay, you said quirky and P.J. Fleck. 
Jim Harbaugh is quirky. Who's quirky? Oh, and not Kirk. No, he, he's just, he's different. Yeah. I mean, he, he, I mean you remember that people forget about this. Do you, it wasn't that long ago where he was doing the satellite camps, coming into Alabama, having that camp in Huntsville where he's running around in his khakis without his shirt on. Yep. Pasty, too, man. Pasty. Sloppy. Dude, he was climbing in tree houses. Did that tree house recruit work out? You know what I'm talking about? I, I, I don't remember, but I remember him climbing the tree house. So I don't know if he signed the guy. And it's not just that. I mean, remember he, when he, he's in the, it was in a Lambo or a Ferrari. Who has it better than us? Nobody. I mean, go Google that one and kick back and enjoy. Amber you know, Vickens glasses. To Europe and whatnot. I mean, it's, he, he is, he ain't quirky, man. He's full on different, but it works. Hey, and it works to the nth degree. Have you been to Minneapolis before? Uh, never, never. Oh, it's a cool, it's a clean town. Everybody's super friendly. They love to drink. Vikings game. I went, it was awesome. But, you know, they've got a burger. It's, and I think it's a little overrated. I don't know if you've ever had one called a Juicy Lucy. Oh, and, yeah. I mean, I make those, dude. That's where you, you put the cheese in, in with it. the meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, neat. Yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, but boy, that will burn the hell out of your tongue if you bite in too quickly. <laughs> Lava. Every now and then it's okay to break out the knife, right? Just cut that bad boy in quarters. I've heard Lowry's for breakfast is a must, and then Manny's on Main is supposed to have a great steak. I'm, I'm okay. kind of, I'm, I'm a little, little hesitant going to a, 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 a new steakhouse because I like to cook my own. I think it's better than anybody else's, uh, unless you're going to like the Lonesome Dove. But yeah, I'm ready, man. I'm, you know me, I'm not afraid. I'll get a three point stance to attack. Let's go. I mean, have you, you know, so I was in Auburn on Saturday and Georgia's not an elite team. At least they weren't Saturday. Now they might end up being an elite team. They struggled, struggled with Missouri last year, about the same spot, ended up going undefeated, won another national championship. But have you seen an elite team yet? Uh, no. Yeah. I think Texas, because of the resume is about as close as we have seen so far. I don't know about Oklahoma. They're a six and a half point favorite. Or a dog coming into this game in the Red River rivalry, which my daughter hit me up for tickets. You know what I did? Atex. <laughs> I, I, I should have called Atex. Yeah. Uh, we used a we used a friend that we know at the Cotton Bowl, so she thinks I paid for him, but I didn't pay for. Oh, him. but she's going. Okay. Oh, nice. yeah. oh yeah. Have you have you been? I've never been to that game, and oh, it's yeah, that man. ratty ass stadium. It, it, the Cotton Bowl needs a can of paint. There's no doubt about it. But if you sit on the fifty. It, it, the people watching it is mesmerizing. It's it's Disney World on crack. I mean, it, it is absolutely next level because if you ate one eyeball from either fan base on the 50, you're drunk <laughs> for a week, right? I mean, that's you know, you look a forehead, you're probably going to go chase a unicorn somewhere, right? I mean, it, it they go next level. And there are fights nonstop. So you wear black. Kick back and enjoy because it is. It's at, remember the, like the Iron Bowl used to be, right? Yeah. Well, you know that's, what's it's, it's funny. What I'm going to bring this is. up. I wish the Iron Bowl still was 50 50, but you know, that's another topic for another day, man. But I mean, yeah, it, it, this one goes next level and it is absolutely spectacular. I was walking from the Auburn Hotel to the tailgate we were at, and I was walking over with a couple of couples. And one of the guys grew up in Birmingham, and he was, you know, a, when we get this age, I guess we just assume we're like 30. And so this dude was like 30 and I was talking to him and he was like, you guys used to play at Legion field, right? When you were at Bama. And I'm like, yeah, we used to actually, we, the fraternity, I'll never forget this. The first weekend, I think the first Alabama game was Southern Miss. I think when we were freshmen. Yeah, that's correct. You're right. Yeah, and, right and I, I did not make it. I stood up my date. I did because the band party the <laughs> night before being a pledge, we were up till like seven cleaning yep. and they were supposed to pick up the date at like 9 a.m. And I wake up, it's almost kick time, and I've completely stood up this check. But I I told him, we used to get on the bus at the back of the fraternity house, and we'd take it to Birmingham. Yeah, with your with your pint of bourbon, right, and your, yeah. and your Sprite, and just roll on over. And that, you know, we went next level, man, in my senior year. It's amazing that you and I are still here on this planet. But we actually got a – do you remember the town motel behind the old gray lady? It's this uh, rap hole, heroin crack hole, right? Yeah. I mean – and I actually, we would get a room just so you go to the bathroom. And about six of us would park at the town motel. And when we rolled in, it was like, what in the hell are these people doing here? And you went into the room and you had like the burn marks on, on the 
<laughs> on the window. So yeah, hey, there was there was no smoking or, or non-smoking. It was all smoking. <laughs> it was all, every yeah. bit of it was smoking. I mean, it was, and we look back on that, going, "What in the hell were we thinking?" And we we weren't. We were we, the, the, we were the ultimate example of the invincibility myth. There ain't nothing gonna happen. Next hey, you know, one of the last one of the last times I was down there, I, I think me and you had gone to the Birmingham Bowl and we walked across the street to the Titan Tiger. I, I think you were maybe and they're special <laughs> that day. Do you remember what the special was? I can't it was like some green drink or something, right? No, it was a blue motherfucker is what they had. It was on the marquee. You don't remember that? It was on I, the marquee. And yeah, dude, and I was you like, saw oh me cringe. It wasn't because you yeah. dropped the F bomb, yeah. which you're allowed to do here. If you're, hey, man, I'm, I'm a guest. If you go right ahead and you want to drop a mother real on some folks, but but I can't yes, I, was, I remember that. That was the last time that I've been to a game, and and I think that was the only time I've ever <laughs> been to Blue the Titan Mother Tiger. Yeah, but uh, so would you compare Legion Field in its last days that we were there? What you've got right now in Dallas with that with that stadium? No, nah, Cotton Bowl is still nicer. Right? Okay. It is. You know, it's in the state fair. I mean, you go get your a Fletcher's corny dog. You know, you know, see some carnies. Talk about people watching, and then and go enjoy one hell of a football game. It, it is one of the more unique settings in all of football. And I told my daughter Rowan, I said, "Look, it kicks at eleven. You want to get there at nine. And she looked at me like I had a third eyeball just pop out in the middle of my forehead. I went, "No, yeah, you want to get down there around nine o'clock to watch the team buses show up. I mean, and if you want to go and, and hit the fair for a minute, but be in your seat." by about 45 minutes before kick because you want to see all the pomp and circumstance. She's a senior. She's never seen it before. That's why I'm going to take it all in. That's why I love those unique games, LT. And, yeah. and heck, right now, you and I, we will settle for just on-campus games like we had with Texas and Alabama the last two years. You know, we need more of those, not the made-for-TV, you know, week one kicks where it's at a neutral site. And I, like, I love those games also, but I really – Ohio State, Notre Dame. I mean, we need more of our best teams going campus to campus and swapping paint because it's, it's that much better. You want to hear the ultimate flex? Brett Yormark, who's ready to get Texas and Oklahoma out of the Big 12. Oh, yeah. He's not going to that game. You know who is going to that game? Greg Sankey. Greg Sankey. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. And you know what? Knowing Greg as well as we do, I mean, he is he's the most powerful man in collegiate athletics. He's a brilliant mind, and he truly does – have the best interest of the game. Uh, that That's front and center for him. He didn't call Texas and Oklahoma. They called him. What is he supposed to do? Not take them? Are you yeah. kidding me? I, I mean, look, hell. He, he, it's, he it's knew what was coming. World right now. If, yeah. yeah he, and, and, he, you know what's coming? Why not take two of the biggest brands out there? Yeah, man. The Pac-12 is where milk, milk, milk bone underwear. I mean, cause, but bottom line, so he finds out your mark's not going. Okay. Well, I'm going to fly fire up the jet, baby. I mean, he's going to be roaming the sidelines with his chest out. Like a boss, and I love I, it. Absolutely I'm love it. About to ask you a ridiculous question. And five weeks ago, if I would have asked this, everyone would have laughed, but I don't think people will laugh nearly as much. After I tell you real quick about my bookie, use that promo code next round, mybookie.ag. Football season is here. Winning is season is here. You're gonna get that bonus when you put in the uh code next round at mybookie.ag. Who wins a college football playoff game first? Lincoln Riley or Deion Sanders? Boy, that would, that would have been – I'd have laughed you right off the face of the earth five weeks ago. Dude, uh, I was at, I was at our tailgate. I did a USC takeover at the tailgate before the uh, uh, game. And it was 34-7, and I said, okay, here we go. Everybody's making fun of this defense. We can get after the quarterback. The pressure has been on Sanders. And then they started rolling. And it comes down cool. to an onside kick, and I'm like, what the hell? This is the exact same USC defense I saw last year in year one under Lincoln Riley. Yeah, you, you know – I think you and I talked a little bit about this when I woke you up from your nap on on Friday. Uh, <laughs> which true story, by the way. True story. That's, 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 that needs a nap, baby. I mean, we, we're not we aren't thirty anymore. That's the bottom line. Uh, but look, Alex Grinch's guys are in position to make plays. You and I have talked about this. The defensive coordinator there at USC. He was great at Washington State. He was tremendous at Ohio State. That's why Lincoln Riley went and poached him at Oklahoma, brought him to SC. It's just that I mean, it, they're in position. They're just not making the damn play, LT. So I didn't see a lot of that USC Colorado game uh, because you know we were on the road over to Starkville and then and then obviously had the game. But and you're up big like that and end up having to squeak out a 48-41 nail biter. Uh, you you, you got to go back to the drawing board. But LSU, I mean, I know they're missing Greg Brooks, but 
damn, Lance. And, and look, man, thoughts and prayers, you know, because well, I, I think we're still waiting to hear on the biopsy. But he was kind of the quarterback, like we're talking about Malachi Moore of Alabama. He was the quarterback on the back end of that LSU defense. And right now, they have, they're doing some soul searching because you, you give up a 50 spot with all – I mean, uh, I mean that, that burger had all the fixings on it, right? I mean, Applewood smoked bacon, sharp cheddar cheese, fresh jalapenos. It was – it was ugly, and, it, and you're giving up 50, and it don't you don't even go to overtime. Uh, yeah, if you would have told me that Ole Miss was going to commit 11 penalties, they were going to give up uh, 49 points, and they were going to give up almost 650 yards to LSU. I would have said LSU wins this game by three touchdowns. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked. Jack has played his ass off again, man. They got to get that other side of the ball figured out because right now they're at, at barring a miracle and a re just ridiculous cannibalism in front of them. Clemson's eliminated. LSU's eliminated from college football playoff contention. And I really, really liked LSU on long odds. I think I got him at like 30 to one to, just to make the college football playoff. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I had him winning the national championship again. Now when you, when you pick a national championship winner is, is rolling the dice. Oh yeah. Um, but so Kentucky against Georgia this week though, this is one of those intriguing games. Now I think the money's coming on Kentucky cause you're getting 14 and a half, but I still, um, this is one of those that I would tread lightly on. Dude, I'm not going near this game with your money, and you've been on fire. I mean, speaking of that, that USC Colorado game, I mean, it was the total was what 73. You're like, take the over. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. I, don't, I, don't like I said it, I needed okay. 21 out of Colorado. I didn't realize I'd get what I got out of Colorado, but I mean, that was that was pretty amazing. But yeah, bottom line, man, I'm not going near this one uh, because Kentucky can either show up and knock the ever loving the hell out of you, uh, or they play just horribly and undisciplined football. So, and, and like I, I like Kentucky a lot. I think Mark Stoops has been one of the smartest coaches in all of college football, not to leave. I know for a fact there were several schools, one being in the ACC, that came to try and get him and almost double his money. And you know what? He stayed. Why? Because he's freaking Elvis, Jim Morrison, uh, Jimi Hendrix all wrapped into one there right now. I mean, he's he and he's doing a hell of a job. But this one scares the heck out of me because I thought that number would come in around 10 or 11 after what they did to Florida and what Georgia didn't do at Auburn. And it came in at 14 and a half. No, man, I'm not going near it. Yeah, but you might get value. You know, this is almost Georgia is the new Alabama. So their numbers are always going to be inflated. The Georgia team that I saw in the first half against South Carolina, the Georgia team I saw in person last weekend, that's not the Georgia team we've seen the last couple of years. And I think more – an indictment just on where we are in college football and how much parity we have with a lot of balance with the transfer portal and NIL. What time's your post game show, by the way, this weekend? You got daytime ball, right? With both. What time's the kick on Kentucky, Georgia? So, Kentucky, Georgia, six o'clock. We probably won't. We'll probably, yeah. What do we have? Auburn's got to buy. We'll probably go post Alabama and I'm probably around six, six thirty. Oh, that's early then. It's nothing like last week. Because I, I, I forgot to ask you, what was the most entertaining aspect of that very entertaining show hitting the air at 1 o'clock in the morning after an 8 p.m. kick? I remember texting the guys on the way back saying, I probably shouldn't do the show. Just because we were out. I was on a boat ride literally at 3.30 a.m. Saturday morning before getting up at 8.30 and heading back to Auburn from Lake Martin to tailgate all day. I sat in the sun, direct sun. Oh, I usually leave games at halftime. I stayed for the full four quarters and, and went back and, and hung out a little bit. And then we finally came back to Birmingham. And I was just like, man, it's been like a long 48 hours. I probably shouldn't do the show. So... I, you know, it was late night. I don't know. A lot. I Can somebody send me a copy? Just like the your your, your highlights. Give me a two-minute sizzle reel of LT. Yeah. Yeah, 48 we, minutes, knee-deep at 1 a.m. for postgame. I'll tell you, the postgame were more fun last year because we had bigger crowds and we had somebody that would sing every week. And so you had your serious people that were tuning in that would get completely pissed off. And Brown has to mute my mic when I'm not talking the whole time. And then you had the other people that would tune in just to see what was going on, the chaos at Club LT. Because you be had random people, you know, staggering around. You'd have somebody pass down the corner, and I'd always do the shot. You had Beachless jumping around. I mean, it was pretty wild back in the day. But we can bring Yeah, Rockstar back. and Ryan Brown trying to keep everybody in line, right? <laughs> yeah. it's like like herding cats and being right there at Club LT trying to do a serious postgame show. I'm in. Okay, so tell me how uh, the, the traveling typically works for you this time of year. You leave 
on Thursday night or Friday morning for the coaches meeting? Uh, it all depends on coaches meetings. Why are you getting all serious on me right now? But yeah, I mean, does, I, do you I, really I, care I, about this? I've got a, I've got a point to this. Yes. Okay. All right. There, yeah. I, I had to be a second follow-up question. Yeah. So it all depends on if I have an NFL game. Like two weeks ago, I had UCLA, Utah, then a red eye to New York for Patriots at Jets. Then came home and just baked, sucked my thumb in a fetal position for two days. Um, you know, last week, just to see, you know, you, Trip, you know, Macker, see some old friends, you know, uh, ran, went by Odie, saw Will Haver, uh, the double deuce, Brian Passick. I mean, just just to see some old friends. I, I left Thursday. Uh, we had coaches meetings on Friday morning with the Alabama staff and then went and saw you on Friday afternoon and, and came back on Sunday morning. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it all, it all depends if I have an NFL game. This week I'm traveling on early Friday morning, sitting down with P.J. Fleck on – Friday afternoon, Harbaugh does not do pregame interviews, as you can only imagine. Um, that's why I'm talking to Blake Corum later this week. Oh, I love that dude. He's country strong, too, man, and a great, great kid. So then I'll fly back on Sunday. So there you go. It okay. kind of varies as to whether I have an NFL game and when coaches' meetings are. And if I have friends in the area where I can steal a day and, and, and yeah. you know, well, go you're, see some folks. You're fortunate, too. You know, you lived in Birmingham for a bit, and flying out of Birmingham is a pain in the ass because you have to get connectors everywhere. Dallas, you guys fly directly Correct. everywhere. Hey, so are you obligated? This was going to be my question. And I know you like the, the team that you work with, but are you obligated to do all your meals with those guys? Not obligated, but, you know, I, I'll tell you this. Uh, that is a good question because we value the Friday meal almost as much as the game. Now, our old crew with Barrett Jones, you know, obviously three-time All-American yep. national champ at Alabama, Sean Kelly, now the voice of the Gators. The meal on Friday, we would talk about the previous Thursday. It was like a scouting report to the next week. <laughs> Who I'm picks not, it? I'm not – I do. Every time. Okay. I mean, like like Wisconsin. We, had, we, were, we were in Wisconsin two years ago. So I called my buddy Mark Talsher, who's a great guest for you all. I mean, Talsh is amazing. Green Bay Packer Hall of Famer, offensive lineman with Aaron Rodgers and the boys. Does a show up there. I mean, he is hilarious. He told me about the tornado room. I'm like, man, I don't want a steak. Dude, Again, the tornado room, it sounds like on the road, right? It sounds like, like a ah, strip cool. club. The, no. <laughs> it does. Hell, hell no. We're going the to the tornado every room. Every possible thing you can do. And I ain't eating food at a topless lizard joint. Uh, no. Never going to happen. No. I, I, but I'm saying the tornado room sounds like oh, a strip okay. club. I you're saying yeah. go to. No, not, instead hell of no. What are you, what? No, oh. hell no. The tornado room, man, they brought out a tomahawk ribeye that would drop a donkey. I mean, it was amazing. So, yeah, we we, we value that Friday meal, man. We're Right now we're looking at Manny's on Main Street in Minneapolis. I already got breakfast lined up at Lowry's for Saturday morning. We got a late kick. I told you about Lubbock, Texas, man, where – I mean, we started to meet sweats on Saturday morning. They wouldn't join me for dinner at the <laughs> pancake house. I'm like, I got to go try this place. It's been here since 1930. I only had one pancake and like one little piece of patty sausage they make right there. And that was it. And I was done. But yeah, I love the, the Friday night meal is an integral part of the game, the game, the, the game experience. I mean, it's like one B to the game. Okay. I'll end on a serious question. You brought no. the fact. Well, we don't have to, but Clemson and LSU are pretty much done. Yeah. Alabama A&M losers going to be done. We say that, but do you get a sense with as much carnage as we've got coming in the month of October and November that a two loss gets into the college football playoff? I can see it. Yeah. I mean, we, I talked about it last night. I mean, LT, yeah, you, you, I could not – I hate agreeing with you. Uh, it's more fun when we disagree. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm in step because, like, the Pac-12 – you know, they're, they're, they're going to devour each other over the next five weeks. Have you seen some of those schedules out in the pac Oh, yeah. I mean, my Trojans have got Oregon and Washington back to back. <laughs> I've got that Utah game coming okay. up in a few weeks. And Utah well, can get some guys healthy, man. Watch out. If Keithy and Rising come back, I mean, they're a legit championship contender. But, I mean, how much more can they miss and they keep winning? I mean, obviously, they didn't win Friday night. But you just they wonder where the uh, sixteen of our top forty-four guys. That's 16. crazy. Yeah, and they were still undefeated going into that game. Do you I think mean, we see Cam rising? Yeah, I do. Yeah, at some point. But yeah, 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 I do. And Keithy, Keithy's a hell of a player, you know. And like they got to get their center back. I, I didn't see if he was back. Uh, you know, going back to Friday night's game against Oregon State, they're just so banged up. But to your to your point, you know, they're going to get healthier. They're not going to get worse. I mean, it's, and they're going to be a team to be reckoned with. So. 
you know, if you have a t- if you have two losses with a lot of meat still left on on your schedule on that bone. Speaking of like Tom Hawk ribeyes, I mean, yeah, you, you still have a legit shot. I would not be surprised at all if a two loss team made the playoff. The original roundtable every week right here on Disrupt the Media. Like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up with Ian Fitzsimmons from ESPN. I'm Lance Taylor for the next round. Safe travels. Enjoy Manny's on. on Main. Hold on. One quick question. Would you actually eat, say, I don't know, fish tacos at a topless lizard joint? So I've only eaten at two strip clubs ever. One was, they used to call it the ballet on Spring Street. The Spring Street Ballet, uh, the Cheetah, when I did a show from there way back in the day. Um, and that was in Atlanta. And then the other was, it was, was in it? Birmingham. Remember we had to eat at the furnace that night when we uh, were about to do live. R- Rockstar's dad form? called me, yelled at me. I'll never forget it. Yeah, because you called him, uh, called him a name not. on the air. We're not going there. It was <laughs> innuendo. I was joking. I know. I remember when you got that call. Yeah, you, you ordered you ordered dinner. salmon. I was like, I ain't eating salmon. I didn't order joint. salmon. You somebody Worst did. That, I didn't order salmon. Someone did. And I yeah, was not, not about to eat it. I don't Hell eat salmon. No. I I sure as hell don't eat salmon in the strip club, but I don't eat it to begin with. Okay, safe travels. You be good. <laughs> I'll see you, buddy.